That is very important. Number three is talk about the skills that you do have, not the skills that you don't have. In today's video, we're going to be going over step by step how to prepare an ASA data analyst interview, especially if it's going to be your first data analyst job. Prepare before you even get the interview. I would say this is one of the most important points to realize. One of the key issues we have at the beginning of our career is that we have too little experience and there's not much in our portfolio to show. But if you haven't got an interview, this is a perfect opportunity to enrich your analytics experience. The way I overcame this issue a few years ago is to try to learn as much as possible in my previous job and get myself busy by coming up with more advanced things I could do, even though it was not strictly required in my job. So whatever you do, try asking yourself, what skills could I learn from this? How does it contribute to my own analytics portfolio? For example, if you're still a student and you're doing your bachelor or master thesis, you could expand your thesis a little bit in the direction of data analysis. For for example, you could do a bit more data pre-processing, um, you could perform some correlation analysis, making some regression models and data visualization. So that this is going to be something you could talk about and relate to in your future interview. Or if you currently have a data analyst job or something remotely related, you could also try to do more in your position in terms of data analytics so that you could learn new skills and expand your portfolio with more advanced and interesting stuff that you could later talk about in your job interview. So you kind of have to flake it or fake it until you make it. You kind of have to pretend that you are in your senior level already. In my first data analyst job, the job got a bit tedious for me after half a year or so and I felt like I was not learning anything new. I mostly did dashboarding in Tableau every day and I had a lot of free time in my hands. So I just came up with a lot of extra analysis I could do in my project. I learned about how to do some more complex data transformation in R, how to do market basket analysis, how to do clustering analysis, I also learned some more JavaScript and D3 so that I could experiment with more freestyle data visualization because I was so bored with Tableau at the time. I also built an automated tool in VBA for my colleagues so that they don't have to do things manually in Excel. My manager back then totally supported me to spend my time on these things, only that he didn't know that I did it mostly for my own benefit. So the action point for you is be creative with your current job and ask yourself, what else could I do to learn this or that? Look at your your personal portfolio of projects and identify the gaps you would like to fill. So if you look at the whole data analysis pipeline, so from data extraction to pre-processing to data visualization and storytelling, how much of your current portfolio already cover all this, all this aspect? If you want to know more about the required skills for data analyst, check out my other video here. In addition, you also want to put your portfolio somewhere online so that other people can find it and see it. If everything just sits in your laptop, it doesn't do anything. Thing. You could push your project to your GitHub profile and write some blog posts about your project, for example, on a Medium, where I also write articles regularly and you can find me there. Some people say you could also create a personal portfolio website, but I think it's not necessary in my opinion. A side note is that you should only publish your personal projects online. The week before the interview, it is the time to do some research and touch up several aspects of your profile. Firstly, you should definitely make sure that your LinkedIn profile is 100% up to date and see if there's any recent skills or experience you could add. Just a few hours before the interview for my current job, I saw that my manager who were interviewing me looked at my LinkedIn profile. So they do look at it because they want to know a bit more about you and it's also nice for them to uh, know upfront who's that person they are going to interview. So it's important to present yourself the best way possible on LinkedIn because this is going to be their first impression of you. You could also touch up your about section to make it sound less generic and preferably relate to the position and the company you are applying for. Add links to your portfolio on GitHub or website. One thing you could also do is to look for people who are working for the company you are applying for and send them a nice message to ask them if they could spare a few minutes to share their experience at this company. Recently, some 
someone also called messaged me that he was applying for data analytics position at my company and would like to have a chat and ask a few questions. I think many people would be willing to have a chat with you. At least I did. Um, this way you could get a bit more feeling of what it's like to work at this company in this position. Also, it's good to read a bit more about the company through their website or through their LinkedIn page. This way you could get some more understanding of what the company is currently doing, uh, what are their missions and what are the problems they are trying to solve. And this information will help you ask more relevant questions to your interviewers and demonstrate your genuine interest in what the company is doing. Refresh your knowledge on data analysis. It's very likely you're going to get asked a few technical questions to test your data analysis skills. For example, what do you do if you have missing values in the data? Or what does it mean to normalize data? What are the common exploratory data analysis techniques? Here you can think of summarizing data, plotting simple statistics, or looking at uh, correlation matrices, etc. These techniques you may already know and you can easily find it online if you don't know it, but it's good to refresh them in your mind so that you won't be surprised during the interview. Your interviewers might also ask you what specific things you could do in SQL, Excel, or Tableau. So be sure to, to think of a few answers in advance uh, just in case you can't recall that quickly during the interview. Fast forward to the day before the interview. It's mostly about practicing some general and common questions you're for sure going to be asked. Let's just go over some of them. Tell us about yourself. For this question, best practice is to start with your professional experience and education. In my case, I had something like this as introduction. My name is Tuvu. I currently work as a junior data analyst at the Amsterdam Healthcare Institute. I work with um, several healthcare providers, such as hospitals and public health organizations. My day-to-day -day work involves acquiring, analyzing, and visualizing healthcare data in order to identify patterns and valuable insights for stakeholders. In the past, Year, I've been using Tableau, Excel, and R intensively in my work and really enjoy using them. Before I took this role, I graduated with a master in economics from blah blah blah. Um, I'm very passionate about the work I do because blah blah blah. So that's the general idea. You could tailor this answer to your own situation. You might also get asked, tell us about some projects you've done. For this question, think about the projects you're most proud of and how you would explain them in a simple and interesting way to a layperson. You can use the STAR framework to tell about the project. So firstly, the situation, so describing the problems or the context, and then uh, the task, what are the expectations and challenges involved? And then you talk about the action. Uh, what did you do and how did you do it? And what are the results? Um, what are the outcomes or the impact of what you did? Any feedback from your clients or your managers? An example of this could be, in one of my projects, I worked with an HR team to find out why the company has a, a large gender pay gap. So males tend to earn much more than females. So my colleagues and I came up with several hypotheses to investigate this issue. My responsibilities were to perform exploratory data analysis, which I did mostly in R and visualizing the results in the Power BI dashboard. Some of the things I did in R were cleaning and transforming data, performing correlation analysis uh, between different factors, and plotting different statistics in the employee data set. In the end, we found out that this issue was mostly because female employees tend to work part-time and it takes them longer to get promoted. The HR team was very happy with this insight and also the dashboard I created. They thought it was really, really helpful. My colleagues and I also made some suggestions suggestions on how they could improve the fairness of the promotion process in the company. So that's just a random example to show you how you could use the STAR method to frame your answer. The next common question is, why are you looking to leave your current role? For this question, I think it's best to uh, frame your answer in a, a positive way. Even though maybe you don't enjoy your current job or you experience some really negative things about it, but it's better to frame it in a positive way. For example, you want more challenge and responsibility. So you could say, my current job is really interesting, but after one year, I feel that I'm not learning many new things in my work. And for this reason, I'm looking for a more challenging position to 
further develop my skills. So this answer shows your employer that you're constantly looking to grow and you're aware of your own development. The last question to round up the interview would usually be, do you have any other questions? For this question, your research earlier about the company would come in very handy. For example, you could say, I read recently on your website about your new proposition or new project about this and that. I found that really intriguing and I wonder how it might be related to the role I'm applying for. Uh, could you please tell me a bit more about that? When the day comes and you actually go into the interview, remember that this is just about the presentation part because you've done all the preparation already. Now it's the time to relax and be confident and be ready to shine. There goes a saying, I don't remember exactly, but something along the line of, if you set your mind to do something, the world would conspire to help you achieve it. But let's talk a bit about your interview day. The one thing I've learned after many job interviews, successful or not, is that it's all about a good conversation. Just be open and honest, bring up any connections you might notice during the conversations, even if it's very small things like if you've been to the same event or have the same hobby as your interviewer and try to make it into a, a good conversation. Your interviewers are most likely your future colleagues or managers and people like to work with those who can have a good conversations with. So just relax, smile and make personal connections. What you also want to let shine through in the conversation is your willingness to learn and your confidence in picking up new skills. For example, if you've only used Tableau and the company you are applying for mostly use Power BI. Don't say that, oh sorry, I only know to use Tableau. You could say something like, I believe that Tableau and Power BI have many similarities and I believe that I can pick up Power BI relatively quickly if required. Also remember to show that you have a can-do attitude and be proactive to take initiatives. You could show this by talking about the projects in your previous job and how you took new initiatives and new challenges uh, which already talked about in the very first point, preparation before you even get the interview. You already did the call and now it's your chance to actually talk about the call. So talk about them and be proud of what you've done. At the end of the interview, don't forget to thank your interviewers to take the time to interview you with a big smile. If it's almost weekend, you could wish them a great weekend or something like that. So that's it for today's video. I hope it's helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below and all the best and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.